A little about my background. I have a degree in computer engineering and a degree in recording. Computer engineering is electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, I was a computer engineer for a while in Silicon Valley. I hated it. Just opened the studio, became a recording engineer. That studio I had to move, so in the meantime, I was lucky enough to get a part-time job with Universal Audio. And when I was there, uh, UA was a completely different company than it is today. And while I was there, luckily, I ran into a guy named John Henson. And up until that time, all I knew, like most electrical engineers of our era, were these sort of cookie cutter or cookbook electronic circuits you would use to do it audio. And in terms of electrical engineering, audio is not very difficult from an engineering standpoint. You just put an integrated circuit op amp in there, and boom, there you go. But what John impressed upon me is that these integrated circuit op amps are the scourge of pro audio. All the great consoles, APIs, and Neves are all discrete transistor consoles. And it's not the tone of those consoles that makes them great, like tape. It's the clarity. And what I mean about clarity is separation. And anyone who's done big, large, complicated mixes, especially with rock bands, you all know it's hard to get separation. And you, you need as much clarity as you can get to get that separation, to separate the middle from the sides, et cetera. So what John impressed upon me was class A analog electronics. And that is really the point I want to drive home. Class A means that you don't have the crossover distortion of a class AB circuit. With a class AB circuit, every time your waveform goes through the middle point, there's a little bit of distortion from one transistor turning off and another transistor turning on. And that creates a cloudy haze throughout the, uh, well, throughout the mix and throughout the image. And uh, when I, I uh, designed the 2192 for Universal Audio, which is how I met Vance, so when he acts like he didn't know I who I it. was, you know, he came knowing what he was in for when he came to that A-B test. I did. <laughs> <laughs> he knew he was about to get his ass blown off. Anyway. Um, well, I didn't know that exactly. Well, it was imminent. Anyway, the, the point is that when I did these A-B tests of class A electronics versus class A-B with discrete transistors, uh, my first impression was that they sounded darker. And what that was was the fact that there was less distortion, because as we know, distortion adds tone. And that tone manifests itself in this sort of perceived brightness and more mid-range. And when you wipe that away with class A, it sounds darker because there's less distortion, basically. But then I also noticed, wow, like the vocals in the middle sound real and three-dimensional. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. So I thought I'd found the holy grail here with this uh, discrete transistor class A electronics, and I naturally assumed that Universal Audio was going to go into a multi-channel version of the 2192, but it never happened. So as a recording engineer myself, I had a bank of four 2192s for my primary channels, and then all my other channels went through Digi 192s that I had. Well, I also had a Studer 800, which I preferred 90% of the time. So anyway, when we would go to track and mix, it was always the decision which tracks are going to have the good eight channels and which are going to have the shitty Digi 192 channels. So anyway, for me, it was my dream to have a multi-channel of this, to have 24 inputs and 24 outputs at least in one unit that delivered a minimalistic transistor circuit path all class A that ultimately unleashed the actual power of digital recording. Because as it turns out, it's not really the A to the D, D to A to process, which is the degradation. There is a lot of that, especially at lower resolution, like 44 and 48. But really, it's the analog electronics in the converters. 